Calaveras County. Welcome to the 21st annual Concourse d'Elegance at Ironstone Vineyards here in Murphy's. I'm Mike Taylor. It is a beautiful fall day. I think it's the second day of fall. We have a beautiful sunny day. There are beautiful sparkling cars out here. This is a fantastic show that does a lot to raise money for 4-H and FFA programs all over the state of California. In fact, the Concourse de Elegance Foundation, the Ironstone Concourse Foundation, has raised more than three quarters of a million dollars in those 20 years. So that's a heck of a thing. Let's get out here and see what some of these cars look like. Folks, this is Stan, and he's from Porterville, and he has one heck of a car. What is this, Stan? It's a 1965 Rambler Marlin. A Rambler Marlin, and I, it's just amazing. It's in original condition, original paint. We were talking a little bit. How do you keep a car in this kind of shape? Uh, basically, the car has just been loved its entire life. It's been waxed and maintained regularly, and, and so that's one of the keys to keeping any car is keeping it, keeping up with the maintenance on it. Goodness. And they only made these for three years. Hmm? Three years. Three years. In 65, 66, and 67. Okay. And so this is a 65, and uh, so this is actually a very unusual color combination for the year, so, that's a, so that makes it a little more special. It's beautiful too, that blue is really unusual. Yeah, this is a marina aqua blue is what color it's called, okay. and then the bottom is frost white. But and the interior has kind of the same kind of variations yes. on that color, it's just gorgeous. Yeah, they, you know, this was designed by a friend of mine, Vince Garacy, and the interior, he did large cars for AMC, and so he, he when he put it was together, when I was talking to him, he said, yeah, he says, we've spent a lot of time making sure the colors work together. Wow, and you said that you actually bought a mark Marlin is your first car? My very first car in 1973. It was a 1965 Rambler Marlin. It was red and black. Uh, where this one is white, that one was red, and where this one is the green, it, it, that, that, that one is black. Oh, so that's a pretty hot looking car. Yeah, it was great fun to drive in high school. Everybody laughed at me because they were driving their, their Mustangs and, and yeah. Camaros, but you yeah. know, and I was driving that. But And you're driving a Rambler, which has become a classic in yeah. American automobiles. That's correct, yeah. The car is great and wonderful. I still have that car. I still drive it on a regular really? basis. Yeah, it's 45 years later. And that's fantastic. I've taken it to every one of my class reunions and, you know. And it's the first and they're thing. not laughing at you. They're anymore. not laughing at me anymore. <laughs> they're kind of laughing at me, like, "How can you drive that old car?" You know, but that's, that's right. I said I still drive it. So. You're driving it because I, I, I kept it. it in such great shape. I love it. Yeah, yeah that's so. great, Stan. Yeah. So the yeah. So the three years on this car, though, they only made they made a little over seventeen thousand of them total. Wow. That's all. Does anybody have any idea how many have kind of survived? They seem to have a very high um, rate of, of, of steel being around because they were so unusual yeah. that people said, this is an odd car, I'm going to keep it. Because yeah. it was kind of at the beginning of when people were going, old cars, unusual old cars are something you keep because they're worth a little bit of money later uh -huh. on. And so there's a bunch of them that are out there, but you know, we probably... 15 to 20 percent of them are still around. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, and you know, you get into the 67 model. The 67 model is a very different car. Really? It's a it's a bigger chassis, it's a longer car, and it's a much different looking car. It's still basically the same shape, but it's a, um, pe some people will say that it's um, it's a better looking car. Yeah, I, I would argue with that point, but, but um, and those cars, those are really rare. They're only 2,500 of those. That's fantastic. So folks, but if you want to see one, come to my house because I've got five of them. I was just going to uh -huh. say, if you're in Porterville and you see a Rambler going by, look for Stan. Yeah, most definitely. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is John from Fair Oaks. And when you see a hood like this, you know it's one make and model of car. What is this, John? It's a 1973 Corvette Stingray. And it is gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. Now, you were telling me that, like this dealer sheet here and you have actually what's it called the it's the original the, build list it's called the factory build sheet and it's the uh, birth certificate of the car it's what goes they put on the frame and the car goes down the assembly line and then it all comes together with those options and 
This is the um, Moroni, as they call it nowadays, but this is, was the uh, original sale sheet at, to you know for the dealerships. Like we see in dealers' like windows see, now. Like you see in cars today, yes. But that build sheet, that really does something to the value of this car, doesn't it? Well, any documentation you can get to the originality of the car, where the car was bought new, adds value to uh, a true collector in a Corvette. Uh, it it kind of builds you know the history to because that's what we're doing in in the concourse like this. We're preserving history, uh, and what a sidebar interest. Uh, little kids will come up to me and say, "That's a Stingray," and I'll say, "How do you know that?" And they say, "Hot Wheels." Oh yeah, Hot yep. Wheels all made this particular body style. They sure did. And the kids all can relate to it. So we've hooked another generation of cars. Yeah, well, you hooked me with them too, because I'm guilty as charged with the Hot Wheels. John, how does a classic like this handle on today's roads? Uh, it, it does very well. I mean, this 73 was the first year that Corvette offered radial tires. Oh. Prior to that, they were bias ply tires. This is also the first year that they have a steel beam in the door in case you get T-boned. And they had thicker body mounts so that the car rode better and was quieter. Uh, it was just a number of upgrades, but the interesting thing is this is still a cowl inducted muscle car. Okay. So this was the end of the muscle car era, but the, everybody was hooked on the Chevelles that had cowl induction. This does too. They I'll just be didn't, they, they just didn't pu push it like they did in the, in the true uh, muscle cars. And so I'm guessing this Corvette still gets up and goes? Oh, it does. It does. It passes everything in sight at the gas station. But <laughs> <laughs> and, and and is that one of the? And I hate to say a drawback, but no, is the, no? it's not that bad. It, yeah. this, this car on the flat on the highway driving sensibly, it'll get fifteen, sixteen. Well, it's actually not too bad not to be driving bad. around in not such back, a sweet ride. Not back in the day. No, it's not. That's it. Now, you were telling me, too, that you're involved in concourses kind of all over Northern California. Yeah, I'm a SCCA concourse judge, and okay. we, do, we go down primarily the Bay Area and judge concourse. And it's a true concourse in that all cars start at 100 points and they walk backwards. Okay. So uh, you can have a one, two, three in your place in your class, and the cars... Or maybe only one or two points apart. One or two. And what kinds of things would subtract a point? Uh, it's all about originality. It's the way the car came off the assembly line. I don't care how many, as a judge, don't care how many options you put on it after the fact or the dealer put on it. I don't take that into consideration. I take into consideration the way the car left the factory. So if you look under the hood, per se, and you start seeing the old spark plug wires, that wasn't original. That didn't happen. No. Yeah. I mean, it's little things like that. Okay. And to get a car to a 100-point car is, is very hard. I mean, you spend a lot of money. Yeah. A lot of money. But, again, you're preserving history. That's it. And when history looks this good, you can't go wrong, can you? No. No. And it, this is, you know, the new cars of today, they don't have the shape. Everybody says, yeah. I have no idea what a car is, a silver car or a black yeah. car. Yep. These, everybody knew what it was and what year it was. Yeah. And, you well, know, the, still, I, it's still aerodynamic by today's standards. And, and I really honestly don't think that Hot Wheels has made a Prius. <laughs> no, I don't think they will either. I don't think they will either. Well, John, right. thanks so much for sharing this car story. Oh, you're welcome. You bet. You're welcome. Don Ballard from Rio Vista, you have got a true classic here. What is this beautiful light blue piece of beauty? It's a 1956 Corvette. And it is a convertible, God both. bless America. It has, it, has, it has both tops. It has the hard top and the... Uh, Underneath the deck lid, here's the camera. Oh, yeah, I see the little the like buckles or snaps or yes, whatever in yes. there. Mm -hmm. I'll be darned. And this is original, right? I restored it back to original, stock, completely stock. Uh, most Corvettes, you'll find that they put mag wheels on it and carburation and they modify it. And uh, this here's, I just kept it right at stock. Well, I noticed that right when I looked under the hood. It looks like the air cleaner is a pancake. It looks pretty darn small. That's how they did it then, huh? That's it. That's it. There was uh, no uh, cleaning them. It was a replacement. Um, you brought it in for service. They take that one off. They throw it and put a new one on. Okay. So, so that was... A, it's a sealed unit. Oh, I yeah. see. Okay. And very hard to find nowadays. It oh, took really? me quite a while to find this one. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so now that you've got a source, you've got it locked in, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We got it now. Now, how long did the restoration, you know, getting this back to stock take? Uh, five years. Five I years? I spent five years on it, yes. Yeah. And I've had it done now, completed five years. 
and uh, it's been in about 20, 20 to 25 shows, and it has six best of shows, which I'm proud of. Goodness. Well, yeah. the, and the quiet birds on the street here think you're in the running today, too. Now, you've got your baby for sale. How much does a sweet ride like this go for? I'm asking 125 Yeah. I've seen them go for more. Yeah. And I would put this up against any of uh, the other ones that sold for that. So. And something that's considered an American classic like this, how does it handle on today's roads? Uh, you get a bad, rough road, you got a problem. you yeah. you got to hang on. But uh, new pavement, it rides just beautiful. Beautiful, huh? And how's the mileage on an old one like this? Not good. Not good, huh? Uh, probably 10 to 11 miles to the gallon. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and it's got a small tank. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> you got to pull in about every 50 miles or 80 miles and think about <laughs> putting more gas in. Yeah. So stay on the interstate, that's huh? It, that's it, yeah. <laughs> yep. All right, Don. Well, good luck selling the car. And have you been to the concourse before? Uh, two years ago, we won here. Oh, did you? Yes. Okay, with yes. this car? Yes. Mm -hmm. You did? All yep. right. Yep. So, so hopefully we can have a repeat. And, there you go. And uh, maybe somebody will buy it, purchase it. There you go. They'll they'll buy it from you right off the stage. Yeah, I hope so. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Don, enjoy the day. Hey, thanks. You bet. Appreciate it. Folks, this is Ted from Altadena, and he has, well, you tell folks what this is. <laughs> it's an Amphicar. They're made in Germany from 1960 to 67, and it's an amphibious car, so it's a boat and a car. How on earth does that work? I mean, I can understand them sealing the undercarriage, but what do you do for propulsion? Well, there's a double transmission, and there's two propellers in the rear, so there's a second little gear stick for forward and reverse in the propellers, so you just drive up to the boat ramp and engage the propellers, and then drive in and keep on driving, keep on steering. I'll be darned. And how does it handle in the water? Slow. Slow. Slow but fun. <laughs> yeah. Because the wheels don't retract, so it's 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 like a little, you know, rental fishing boat, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's got quite a bit of drag. Mm -hmm. What were they kind of designed for? Just to be an amphibious vehicle, to be a dual-use vehicle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how long have you had yours? 25 years. 25 years. Did you have to do any restoration to it? Uh, yeah, they... Uh, Taken it in salt water, so it was all rusted out oh. like a like a Midwest winter beater yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. So I had to spend a year and a half welding new patch panels on it, restoring it. So no more no more salt water lakes only for yeah. now on. And did you actually drive it up here to the show from Southern California? Uh, no, that we trailer it now. We used yeah. to used to drive it a lot before we had a vehicle that could tow a car on a on a trailer. Yeah. But it's 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 not it's it's not a very good handling car due to its weight and narrow track and height and so forth so yeah. it's anytime you have a dual use vehicle it's kind of a compromise you get kind of the worst aspects of those but it rules the boat ramp yeah it sure does because they really come in and out of the water easy yeah you just drive in and drive out it almost doesn't care doesn't hesitate doesn't mm -hmm. think about it anything that's mm -hmm. really interesting what do you enjoy most about owning something like this I'd, I'd seen him way back when in the 60s and I always wanted one then 25 years ago, I saw it advertised for sale, so I went and, and got it. Mm -hmm. Grabbed it and went for it from there, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many shows do you make it to a year? Uh, not a lot. Yeah. But we take it up camping with us at Tahoe and uh, Twin Lakes on the other side of the series. There you go. So when we see a car in Lake Tahoe, we'll know it's you, huh? Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Ted, thank you very much. Have mm -hmm. you been to the concourse before? No. No, okay. What do you think about it so far? Well, I haven't had a chance to tour yet. I've been giving... You've been giving, giving these rides, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the most popular things at the event this year. I guess so. Mm -hmm. I guess so. Well, thanks for sharing, Ted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Okay. Now, folks, one of the featured cars this year at the Concourse d'Elegance is the Nash. And this beautiful Nash is owned by Gene from Oakley. Gene, tell us about this beautiful car. Uh, it's a 1951 uh, Nash Ambassador Super. It was the premier uh, top of the line car in that year for Nash. And it had an overhead valve uh, six cylinder engine, which put, produced 115 horsepower, which was the most uh, power of any of the cars in the 1950s. My gosh, and you were telling me that when you got it, which was just a few years ago, right? Yes, three years ago. Three years ago, 
that it was, and we were we were politely calling it a less than beautiful Nash green. green. <laughs> <laughs> now, what? Who came up with this incredible color scheme? I just think it looks great. Well, I I like the idea of what we call the mask, which which frames out the windows and and sweeps back. The traditional Nash had a if it had a two tone. It was the roof all the way down to the trunk, and this was all one color. But I want a little different, a little, uh, I think, classier. Well, it helps that beautiful interior pop, because yeah. it's the same color, and then some of that gray is inside, too. Right. It's just beautiful. Yeah. So uh, we have a friend who's a painter, and he agreed to paint the car for me. And he also painted the interior, the dash, the door jams, everything else. But in the meantime, I had a lot of mechanical problems with it, of course, being an old car. As an old had, car does. So I replaced everything from the, the fan, actually went through the originator, uh, the radiator when I first got it. Wow. So I replaced that, and then the engine started smoking, so I had to rebuild the engine. Then the transmission went out and the clutch, so I had to get all that stuff redone. It's hard to find parts for these. I got a lot of the parts out of a, uh, another contact that I have in Illinois. And he, he helped me out with a lot of the problems. He's, is, he's a retired uh, dealer for Nash. I was going to say, is there a pretty good kind of community of Nash owners that kind of helps each other out? There, there is a group. It's not a very big group. But uh, they bend over backwards to, if they have the parts, they, most of them even just give it to you. And uh, it's up to you to replace everything. But uh, we are proud of this car. It goes down the road uh, 65 to 70 miles an hour freeway speeds. Wow. Has an overdrive uh, three-speed transmission. Can I ask, what kind of mileage does something like this get? This gets uh, close to 20 miles to the gallon. Really? That's yeah. pretty darn good. Yeah. And it's been to Reno, up and down the mountains and everything else. And uh, it's just a great riding car. My wife and I, we, we just enjoy it. And, and Gene, you were telling me this is your first time to the concourse, too. Yes. You came because the Nashes were featured. Right. What do you think of this show so far? Oh, this is, this is a great show. All these beautiful cars. And every person you talk to here is friendly. They're willing, willing to talk about their cars and admire your own work. Well, it's because they've all got great stories like yours yeah. does, Gene. Thank Thanks a lot for sharing the tales. Okay, thank you, you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Conrad and Chris, all the way from Reno, Nevada. Tell the folks about your cool trailer. It's a 1963 Terry trailer. Uh, I've had it for about three years. Paid $4,000 for it. We come camping as, as many rallies as we possibly can, four or five a year. Um, this is our favorite event um, here at Ironstone. Uh, I don't know, we go and antique shop and collect all this cool stuff behind us and, you know, we love it. That's great. Did you have to do much work to it to get it into this sort of state? Uh, no, we bought it pretty much the way it is. Wow. Uh, I've done a little bit of interior work, restained the doors in the, in, on the cabinets and other than that, no. Yeah, and so you actually do camp in it still? Oh yes. Oh yeah, we go to Pyramid Lake north of Reno and camp in it. We go, we stayed here last night at Ironstone. Uh, nice. Next week we're going to be at Plymouth uh, for the trailer fest and we're going to camp in it there for four days. Nice. So yeah, we we go out and do as much as we can. Chris, what do you enjoy about having a, what I'll call an antique trailer like this? <laughs> oh geez. Um, well, it's it's kind of um, it's kind of nice to have but it still does need a lot of work. Yeah, I mean it's in the you know it's in that middle stage, but we're gonna up, do a lot of upgrades. We want to try to keep everything original in it. Um, I like a little newer, but you know, keeps it fun and rustic, yeah, right? Yeah, it does. <laughs> we want we kind of want to mix and match, but yeah. no, it it does need a lot of work. But for the most part of it, the trailer was pretty in pretty good condition. You know, it wasn't. Um, 
you know, like broken down and stuff to where we had to do a whole lot to get it running, you know, and get it going. So That's but, great. And yeah. you guys have been to the Ironstone show before. What do you think of the concourse? Oh, I love it. It's a blast. I like that they let us stay here for three days and camp here. You know, it's great. You get to go wine tasting, which we have a wine theme inside. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen the inside, but everything is wine at this uh, juncture right here. You bet. Well, it sounds like we need to get inside, doesn't it, folks? This is John from Rancho Murrieta, so pretty close to Calaveras County, but he's got a classic, a 1973, De, now, is it De Tomaso? No, is that? De, De Tomaso. De Tomaso, I knew I was going to butcher yes. it. Okay, <laughs> all right. And it's a Pantera for those who know that car. Now, you've got to tell us about this beauty, John. Well, it didn't start off this pretty. So uh, 23 years ago, I bought it down in L.A., and it was the ugliest maroon color you'd ever seen. <laughs> and that lasted about two weeks until I went to the body shop. Said, okay, we're gonna, we can't live with this. And it transformed into a GT5, so it was all white with, with the wing in the back and the different flares and, and um, all different setup and everything. And uh, had that way for about 15 years. And it was a nice car. It was nice. But... He said, you know, if you got something like this here, let's go loud and proud. So I was like, okay, we're going to go over the top. We're going to get crazy. We're going to paint this thing Lamborghini Fire Mist Orange. Oh, man. And then let's modify this to the max. So from little areas here where the recess, like the Ferraris are done, we put uh -huh. the vents, rechange the headlights, put a different hood. The interior is all carbon fiber. Wow. The wheels are all custom done. Um, just over the top to make it like, yeah. ooh, wow. Yeah. and did some really cool motor work to it at the time and um, this car has been in many shows and, and it's now nationally known because it's this bright color. And then you were saying the interior was completely redone too and it's all car it's carbon all fiber? carbon fiber, yeah. So if you look inside here, it's all the gauges have been reconfigured wow. and all custom done with a custom interior that I designed to match the car and everything. So I just wanted to be like one of a kind and I, I accomplished that. So it looks one of a kind. How does it go down the road? Um, do you know any officers here that can possibly not, you know, can I, can I get it? No, and they're out of your shop. Yeah, okay, so. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, you know, I can't outrun a Motorola, so, or the helicopter. <laughs> but, <laughs> but other than that, you know, it, it, gets, it, it gets it on. It does. Yeah. Do they handle pretty well, too? Yeah, they do, because the motor's in the middle, so you don't have any front end or back end load. So, so it's a very balanced car, and it handles extremely well, yes. Yeah, yeah. so it's a good car. Yeah, it's yeah, just great, John. And have you been to the concourse before? This is my first time here. Yeah. So what do you think so far? Oh my God, this is over the top. I mean, uh, come back next year. We'll bring, it, we'll bring a different car next year. There you go. And come back again. So it was a lot of fun. Can't wait to see you, John. Thank Thanks. you. All right, please, sir. You bet. Bye-bye. Now, folks, this is Charles, and this is rolling history. What is this beautiful car, Charles? This is a 1905 National Model C Roadster uh, touring car. Touring car, and the the documentation up front this is the only one that's still around the only one we know of wow and so how did you come about it uh, I'm very fortunate to know the right people <laughs> and what do you own a car like this for well my great-grandfather helped found national back in 1900 really uh, it's, a, it's a family thing family thing and how long have you had this beauty uh well just a couple of years actually really okay so you did know the right people <laughs> oh yes very much so yes it came this way it came this way so it was already in great shape yes huh? yes that's great now who's the couple here making the car look extra pretty well this is bill and sheila and bill is the primary mechanic on the car oh really now how much work does this thing need to stay running this is a car that you drive a little and fix a little, drive a little and fix a little, drive a little and fix a lot. So um, it happens that way. It, um, for every hour of driving, you spend about three hours maintaining. Really? Yes. yes. Now, what's the hardest thing about keeping it running? 
There really isn't anything hard about it. You just have to understand the technology of 1905 and put yourself in that position and, and understand what needs to be fixed. It's just a piece of machinery. That's just great. Now, is this going to be one of the cars that we fire up a little bit later here today? I believe so. We're certainly in the 1911 next door here. Oh, nice. Okay, so you've got a few cars here or just well, two? Two cars. Yeah? Two cars. And what do you enjoy about owning this? Is it keeping that family history alive? Well, that's part of it. And I'm the family historian, and I love history. And I'm from Indianapolis, born and raised. So, you know, there's Motor City, and you bet. it's just all the above. Cars are important. They are. They Very are. much so. And it's it's a lot of fun to share them with the public, too. They get a really, really big kick out of all this. I bet. Have you been to the concourse before, Charles? This is my first year. First year. What do you think so far? Well, it's a great concourse. And it's nice selection. I have some Nashes, too. And Nash is the featured car this year. So that's yep. mighty my, my nice. That's great. It is. It's a great, like I say, rolling history. It Perfect. Is. Thanks, Charles. Thank you. You bet. What an incredible field of cars, 387 strong, our biggest Concour ever at Ironstone, our 21st year. Lots of fun displays. I wanted to, to while we're waiting for the cars to roll down the road here, uh, I wanted to thank some special folks. Uh, I, I, I doubt anyone missed the fact that we had four Amphicars running around down in the pond. And I want to thank Todd Darling, Scott Mickelson, Ken Chambers, Ted Ancona, and Craig Parada for uh, offering all the rides and bringing that bit of entertainment to us. And I might add that the donations that were provided by people who chose to take those rides have exceeded $1,000, which will go directly to 4-H and FFA. So it was fun and it was productive and it really added some color to this event. Um, we really appreciate what they've done. We were really blessed this year to have Steve Mole from Mole Coach Builders in Oakland, who brought five cars which were displayed up in front of the patron's tent. The Mole Gatto was the uh, subject of our bottle and our poster this year, and we really appreciate uh, incredible quality. You know, people think of, of coach building as having a, become a lost art uh, that uh, died with the end of the 1930s. But as you can see from these cars, it's alive and well in Oakland, California. We had a kind of a fun display up in the top uh, uh, row of the amphitheater and sort of our Hollywood feature this year. And we want to thank four people who brought some special cars. Uh, Rob and Jeannie Hilaritis brought the uh, 1935 Duesenberg. That car was sold new to tap dancer Bill Bojangles Robinson, who uh, kind of got his ultimate fame uh, dancing with Shirley Temple in movie in the 1930s. And Dr. Marilyn Wayton brought a 1937 Cord Supercharged Sportsman, which was purchased new by Al Jolson. Al Jolson kept the car until 1940. In 1940, that car came into Dr. Wayton's family, where it remains to this day. A great story. And from the uh, Stevens family, the Academy of Art collection in San Francisco, the red Duesenberg convertible sedan, that car was purchased new by actress Dolores Del Rio. And finally, the big McFarland town car that you saw up there, which was about six feet tall, that was a Warner Brothers studio car in 1925. So a fun display, and we appreciate all the effort. And, and I want to especially speak to uh, uh, the National Auto Museum, the Hera Collection's crew. The McFarland Town Car has not run in 35 years. And we asked them to bring it this year uh, because we thought it would be a fun thing to see. And their, their crew and their docents went to work, and it's now alive and well and drove up the hill onto the field. So uh, that's a superhuman effort with a great old car, a very low production car. There's only about 20 McFarlands uh, left in the world. And as usual, you know, we have this incredible place to play with cars, and we owe a huge debt to, uh, to the Couts family who have developed Ironstone and brought us this venue uh, when this amphitheater was conceived as a music venue 
It wasn't uh, necessarily conceived for automobiles, but prior to its construction, uh, John and Gail visited other shows. They visited Pebble Beach and saw cars running over a stage. And as a result, you can now drive onto every tier in the amphitheater and you can drive cars over the stage. So they went uh, a country mile to accommodate uh, those of us who love these cars. So a big hand to the Couts family. They have truly <laughs> given us a wonderful place. And, and then finally, I want to echo Gail's comments and thank our chief judge, uh, Jim Sinclair, his assistant, Wayne Linden, and the 50 or so folks that helped them to, uh, to choose the winners. And we're about to start the process where we find out the results. But let's go ahead and bring the first car on. This is in our antique class for cars built prior to 1924. And the winner is a 1905 National Model C Tourer brought to us by the Blaine Motorsport Foundation from Visalia, California. National was a very high quality automobile produced early on, had some successes in racing. This is the oldest known National left. A beautiful, beautiful, fun car. Best in class for class A in the antique class. And following up in our vintage class, which is for cars built in the late 20s up through the mid 30s, best in class, a 1932 Ford four cylinder five window coupe belonging to Jim Boyden from San Jose, California. This was the successor to the Model A, a little bit rounder curves and more flowing body lines, but just as successful and a wonderful car. Coming next is a real treat in, in uh, American and European and classics, open body types. This is a 1949 Alfa Romeo Model 6C 2500 Cabriolet with coachwork by Pininfarina belonging to Dave Buchanan from Menlo Park, California. Alfa Romeo built their, their reputation building big, powerful cars in the 19, late 1920s and through the 1930s. And this was the follow-up uh, in their immediate post-war production in 1949 as Italy got back on its feet and it's an extremely rare car, really desirable car, beautiful color, beautiful job, best in class, open classics. And next moving to closed American and European classics, Best in class, a 1933 Chrysler Custom Imperial LeBaron Club Sedan, Larry and Susan Nanini from Colma, California. This car, the hood exceeds five feet in length. <laughs> Got a fan club. This was the last year for the big Chrysler Imperials and many feel the finest of uh, a car with elegant lines but a sporting chassis and here we are with a beautiful example. Next in our Pierce Arrow class. Best in class, a 1934 Pierce Arrow 8-cylinder model 840A Sport Coupe. Paul Petrovich from Sacramento, California. Pierce Arrow, when they started, were noted for rather conservative lines as they went into the Depression to try and capture what was left of the luxury market. They embraced flowing Art Deco styling and were one of the, one of the most successful body producers, automobile producers, who adapted to streamlining. And this is a perfect example here. 1934 Pierce Arrow. from one of the other great luxury brands from 1930s in the Packard class.
best in class a 1937 Packard Model 1500 Super 8 sedan brought to us by George and Eddie Beck from Concord, California. 1937 saw the, the Depression lightening a bit and uh, it was Packard's highest production year in the 1930s for their big Super 8 cars. And next in our pre-war Nash group. We had a wonderful support from the Nash clubs this year. This is a 1924 Lafayette sedan. Extremely rare car, very high quality car. This was Nash's attempt to go very much up market into the luxury market and they succeeded mightily with this car. An extremely rare example. I, I don't think I've ever seen a Lafayette before in my life. Leslie Montarbo from Morgan Hill, California brought this car and we're thrilled to have it here. And next in the post-war Nash and Rambler production, first in class is a 1959 Rambler American two-door sedan brought to us by Cindy Carvalho from Patterson, California. Nash introduced this small body style as a Rambler in 1951 and they discontinued it for a couple of years but as the compact car swept craze swept in the late 50s they brought this design back and updated it and this is a perfect example of a 1959 Rambler American. Next in the uh, category for wooden bodied cars, best in class goes to a 1948 Mercury V8 station wagon, belongs to Michael Fazio from Half Moon Bay, California. Beautiful all wood body. Picture this at the country club or at the beach or wherever you'd like to use a woody. Great car. Next, an incredible car in our Rolls-Royce and Bentley category. We have a 1925 Rolls-Royce Phantom One Biddle and Smart Town Car brought to us by Ed and Karen Archer from Hayward, California. The Archers bought this car in Idaho some years ago and decided to drive it home in unrestored condition. It used 54 quarts of oil between Idaho and Hayward, California. But it doesn't anymore. So. Great car, beautiful car, wonderful supporters of the hobby. Recognizing the value in unrestored cars as a history lesson to what they were like when they were new. In our unrestored class, pre-World War II, we have a 1925 locomobile boat tail roadster brought to us by Bill and Tanya Passy from Watsonville, California. Great car. Locomobiles were one of the highest quality cars you could buy in the teens and 1920s. This is a great example. The Passys just completed what is known as the Modoc Tour, which is a hub tour out of the Al Touris area up in the northeast area of California. Gravel roads, dirt roads, paved roads, they go everywhere up there and just have a great time. And this car is fresh back from that trip. So, congratulations. Congratulations. Many people uh, knew uh, Bill's father, Jack Passy, who was a legendary collector in the uh, San Jose and Watsonville area. All right, moving along. Post-war unrestored cars. Here's a remarkably preserved example a 1957 Oldsmobile Series 98 hardtop coupe belongs to John White of Sacramento, California. Again, this car is totally unrestored, just as it left the factory. It's had some careful ownership through the years, and it continues with Mr. White. Beautiful car. All right, one of our favorite classes here because we get an eclectic group in our mini and micro cars. This year, the uh, 
Fast in class is a mini bus. And uh, we have a 1961 Volkswagen Type 2, 23 window van. Richard Grace from St. Helena, California brought this van to us. Gone are the days when you saw these running around town with curtains flying out the window and you could buy one for $500. But uh, this one has uh, certainly been brought back to a beautiful as new condition and it's the rare model with multiple windows. Really a fun car to have. Next, starting our march through the American production cars post-World War II in our category for cars built between 1946 and 1953. Best in class goes to a 1953 Chrysler New Yorker Deluxe Newport hardtop coupe. Brought to us by Randy Kuhns from Fairfield, California. Beautifully restored example, Chrysler Hemi Power. Just a whole lot of fun and a beautiful vehicle and the pinnacle of Chrysler production. Thank you very much. Continuing on through the years for the category for cars built between 1954 and 1961. Best in class, a 1954 Oldsmobile Super 88 two-door sedan. Rick and Sandy Sanguinetti from Santa Rosa, California brought this car to us. Beautiful example. Oldsmobile Rocket 88s. And we divided out a special category for this year for what are referred to as the Chevrolet Tri-Fives, 1955 through 57 Chevrolets. This is a 1957 Chevrolet Bel Air convertible, brought to us by David and Elizabeth Fletcher from Brentwood, California. Chevrolet really owned the market in 1955 to 57, and it's not hard to see why. Beautiful car, highly collectible today. Moving along, automobiles between 1962 and 73, best in class to a 1970 Chevrolet Camaro Z28 Coupe. Rick Gautier from Elk Grove, California. This is a beautiful example of what came to be called the muscle car era. And a wonderful game, very high performance. The Z28 was a special top of the line series. Beautiful example. And you know this car's coming. In our Ford Mustang category, this is a 1965 Ford Mustang Shelby GT350, and this is a really unusual special version. Uh, Carroll Shelby had great impact on this car, and it was a performance car, if there ever was one, brought to us by Robert Brayton from Oakdale, California. Very low production car, very sought after these days, and this is a wonderful example. Moving into European sports cars built prior to 1973, best in class is a 1973 BMW 3.0 CS Coupe, brought to us by Gerhard Fairman from San Dimas, California. These are very special bodies, two-door hardtop styling. I had the privilege of owning one of these once way back when, when I was a little younger, and they go very quickly, I got in all sorts of trouble with those people with the black and white thing up in the corner there. But uh, a beautiful example. Next in our Jaguar class, best in class, it goes to a 1963 Jaguar E-Type Coupe owned by Danny F. Ailes from Stockton, California. This is the two-door version, 
They made both a coupe and a roadster, and many people feel that the coupe with this teardrop styling was really one of the iconic designs of the 1960s, and you have to agree with that looking at this car. Beautiful example. Ed, uh, next car in our MG class, a 1946 MG TC Model 1013 Roadster, purchased by Ron Engstrom from Philo, California. MG was one of the first sport car importers after the war and gained a lot of popularity, very popular car. Wonderful to have it here. A note to our field crew, if we could keep these cars moving around the circle a bit, we're getting a bit of a uh, traffic jam down here, a classic traffic jam. And next in our Triumph class, best in class is a 1966 Triumph TR3 Roadster, brought to us by Kenneth Pinkerman from Fair Oaks, California. Again, Triumph was another British manufacturer that brought sports cars into the United States and helped popularize the movement towards those cars in this country. Beautiful example. And coming from Germany in our Porsche class, best in class is a 1965 Porsche Model 912 Coupe. Paul and Jackie Mayhews from Somerset, California. Beautiful example. I think you have some friends in the audience. Classic Porsche style. And our last European category this year, we had a wonderful representation of Mercedes-Benz. Best in class was a 1961 Mercedes 190 SL Roadster. Brought to us by Mike Epperson of Aptos, California. Beautiful car. This was the predecessor to the, uh, the Pagoda style car and a very popular car, very stylish, beautiful high quality bodies and engine. 1961, 190 SL. If you got down by the lake today to watch the Amphicars, you noticed we had a wonderful row of Chrysler 300 letter cars. And the best in class from our Chrysler 300 class is a 1961 Chrysler 300G Coupe belonging to Steve Simon from Gardnerville, Nevada. Chrysler 300 was a special high power version each year had a, a, a letter which increased through the years from C to G, D, E, and F, and this is a G model from 1961. Beautiful car, dual carburation, high power engine, wonderful example. And next, in our Chevrolet Corvette class, best in class, a 1973 Chevrolet Corvette Coupe, belonging to John Manby of Fair Oaks, California. General Motors fiberglass sports car, huge success when it was introduced in 1953, 1954, and continues in production to this day. Highly collectible, a beautiful example. In our next gathering, in our Chevrolet Corvair class, best in class goes to a 1966 Chevrolet Corvair Corsa Coupe. Belongs to Wes Nicholas from Folsom, California. Corvair was introduced in 1960, 
rear engine, opposed six-cylinder engine, got kind of a bad rap, unfortunately, which was undeserved. Uh, thanks to Ralph Nader, but the, uh, the, the line persisted, changed styling. This is the later styling. It's a beautiful example of a Corvair Corsa. And next in our Model A Ford category, this is a late 1928-1929 Ford Model A Sport Coupe. Belongs to Edward Rodriguez from Auburn, California. I think you've got a fan club too. When the Model A was introduced in late 1928, it was a stunning uh, uh, event. People were used to Model T Fords, which had grown somewhat dated, and the Model A, with its very high style, was an instant success, and despite the depression, was very successful. Next, in our Ford Thunderbird class, best in class is a 1956 Ford Thunderbird belonging to Diana Mann from San Carlos. For Thunderbird were introduced in late 1955 and were an instant success and are, are still popular to this day, highly collectible cars, and we've always enjoyed a great deal of support from uh, the Thunderbird group here at Ironstone, and we thank them for that. Vintage commercial. Best in class this year goes to a 1941 Chevrolet. One half ton pickup belongs to Al Ruiz from Salinas, California. This is one of the early versions of the Chevy pickup which grew to dominate the pickup market and it's no wonder why seeing this car. Beautiful example. And rolling in on two wheels is the winner of our vintage motorcycle class. This is a 1927 Excelsior Supersport model brought to us by Jim Ouellette from Lodi, California, quite the uh, motorcycle collector. And this is a beautiful example of early, early motorcycles. They were works of art. Highly original, beautifully maintained. Next, in our De Tomaso Pantera class, special hybrid American-Italian car, American power, Italian design, a 1973 De Tomaso Pantera belonging to Gary and Sue Choate from Wilton, California. Lots of power, lots of style. Beautiful example. And finally, here comes one of the cars that's had so much fun today. In our Amphicar class, this is a 1967 Amphicar Model 770 Amphibian brought to us by Todd Darling and Scott Mickelson from Sacramento, California. These cars were built in Germany. There are not many left, but as you can see, they really work, and they've been wonderful today, as we said earlier, in helping us raise funds for our charities, and I saw a lot of smiling faces riding around in that lake, and we really thank Todd, who put this whole operation together and helped us to make such a success out of this. We thank you. We don't bring any of the vintage trailers over the ramp for obvious reasons, but uh, we'd like to note that the judges chose this year's winner in the vintage trailer class as a 1953 Hyalite single wheel camp trailer, and it was brought to us by Michael and Debbie Smith from Sparks, Nevada. It had the tent with all the matching accessories, and you know, all of that came out of that little trailer. So. Thanks very much. And there they go. All right, now we're going to have some special awards. And the first car in that group is 
Having a, having a bit of a moment, so, um, and we'll give them more than a moment. This is a very special car. Wayne Craig is going to come up and describe it. This, this is a 1917 Hall Scott. And this racer was conceived in 1917. Economic forces intervened. The parts were assembled. The car was never completed. And Dick DeLuna, who is driving the car, and his wife Matilda from Woodside completed this car so many years after it was conceived. And here it is today. They vintage race it all the time. It's a runner. It's beautiful. And it's powerful. Thank you. In an award we, uh, we give to uh, thank our various sponsors, the Iron Tone Sponsors Awards, chosen by our special committee this year, goes to a 1953 Chrysler New Yorker hardtop coupe. Randy Kuhns from Fairfield, California for this beautiful 1953 Chrysler New Yorker. Newport hardtop. Very special car, low production in 1953 and a perfect example here today. Next, our, our Ironstone Foundation Award. This is a car that's chosen again by a special committee. Again, a 1934 Pierce Model 8840 Coupe. And this car is recognized for its incredible Art Deco styling. You know, the American auto industry had trouble uh, transitioning from the sort of three box styling of cars or two box styling and some cars were more successful than others and Pierce Arrow really rang the bell in moving to streamlined styling. And this, this car was so many Art Deco details, it's just a perfect example. And we thank you for bringing the car. All right, next is a really fun car. Again, chosen by our special committee. This is, is what they determined to be the best unrestored car, most fun on the field. This is a 1958 Edsel Bermuda station wagon brought to us by Ted Downer of Morgan Hill. I hope you all had a chance to go by over behind the car, coffee and donut tent and learn about this car. It was the exact car that was used in the production of the Donna Reed show in 1958. Got some fans out there too. And uh, Mr. Downer was able to, to buy the car and find out and verify its history. And it is untouched original condition, beautiful, bizarre 1958 upholstering and he was kind enough to bring a television set from the era and, and had it playing in front of the car with segments from the Donna Reed show showing this car. So a wonderful example of preservation for a very historic car with a movie history. And moving to our final three awards, which we consider to be uh, very important to this event, the most elegant car, the most elegant closed car in the mind of the judges at the uh, 2017 Concours is a 1935 Duesenberg model JN, Rolston bodied Berlin, which belongs to Rob and Jeannie Hilaritis from Visalia, California. This is a, a one-off body. It was commissioned and purchased new by Bill Bojangles Robinson, the tap dancer in 1935 and uh, has been uh, uh, lovingly cared for through a series of hands ever since. And, and Mr. Hilaritas, Mr. and Mrs. Hilaritas have been a special caretakers because they went to the, the, the trouble. This car and a, another Duesenberg were under common ownership in the 1950s 
and the owner swapped the engines, so this car did not have its proper original serial number engine. Rob tracked the uh, other car down and convinced the owner of that car to allow him to have the engines rebuilt and swapped so that this car now has its original engine. And that's quite a feat for historic preservation. And not only that, but it's a darn good looking car and uh, we thank you. Most elegant, most exciting open car at our Concours this year by decision of the judges. 1933 Cadillac V16 all-weather Phaeton. This car is brought to us by Steve Marini from Danville, California. I believe it's one of four of this style that were built in 1933. Depths of the Depression, very low production for Cadillac, and this was one of their more dramatic body styles, if not their most dramatic open body styles. It's fully enclosable as a convertible sedan, but with the top down, it's a perfect open Phaeton, and it's a very, very special car. And we thank Steve for bringing it here from Danville and sharing it with us. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Best of show, 2017. Here again, the Alfa Romeo 6C2500. Pininfarina Cabriolet. David Buchanan from Menlo Park, California. This again is an individual custom coach built car with this incredible platform and the incredible Alfa Romeo 6C engine. Uh, it's just a fabulous combination, very rare car. The Italian auto industry was devastated by World War II. They were just getting back on their feet and they built very few cars in the late 40s and this is one of those striking examples that survives and beautifully restored. We're really proud to have this car here and proud to award it best of show. Thank you. Isn't that color incredible? So we'll get some photography of that car. You know, I'd just like to wind up by saying that we appreciate you all coming here and, and enjoying this. And again, we love putting on this show. We love the charities that it benefits. And uh, we try and keep this show light and comfortable and relaxing. And the weather certainly blessed us this year. We just feel we've had a wonderful time, and it's all because of you folks who bring cars and you folks who come as, as spectators and who support our charity so generously. So, the fourth Saturday of 2018, we'll all be back here. I think that's the 21st or 22nd, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, come on back and bring your cars and bring your friends, and uh, we'll be here. So, again, thanks to the Couch family and have a good afternoon.